registering a company for tax in Ireland is actually relatively easy. Um, you just have to fill out a simple TR2 form. Now there is no real need to be paying an accountant or professional to do this form for you unless you have a pretty unique situation. So that's why I'm going to go through this form section by section just to give you an idea of how it's done. You can download this example that I'm going to go through down in the description section as well if you want to take a look through it in your own time. So at this point in setting up a company you will already have registered your company with the company's house, the CRO. Um, at that stage then, once you get your company number and your company is incorporated, you can then go and register your company for tax. So that is the stage when you come to filling out this TR2 form. I have a video that goes through all of the different stages that you need to go through to set up a company in Ireland. I'll leave a link for that there somewhere on the screen too if you want to check that out. So let's start working our way through the form here. I've just made up a company here called Kitchenware Limited, which we're going to register for tax. There are five parts to this form, A, B, C, D, and E. Um, they're all pretty easy. It may seem a little bit daunting at the start, but they're all pretty easy to go through. And I go through each of them now individually. We'll start off with part A, which is just general details about your company. So what you need to fill in here is just your company name, its address, you know, your telephone number, your email and your website, uh, your registered address. So your registered address and your business address might, this, might be the same, might be different. It is basically wherever you keep your books and records. Next up, you need to put in the legal format. I'm guessing that 99% of you will have set up a private limited company, so you can tick that box. Then the date the company was registered. So that will be on your certificate of incorporation that you got from the CRO. And also you need to put in your CRO number, which will also be on that certificate of incorporation. Next up, then you need to put in the date when your business actually commenced. So when it started actually trading. So you can put in that date there. On to the next page, then it asks you if the company was registered for tax in Ireland previously. Um, more than likely it will not have been, so you can leave that blank. Then we move on to the percentage of anticipated sales that you plan on making online. You can put in a random estimate there of how much you plan on making sales in person versus online and also your website address. Then they want a bit of details on the type of business that you're going to be running. So in this instance, it's a retail business and a bit of description about what the business actually does. Just a little short few words and also an estimate on how much you expect to turn over in revenue in the first 12 months. Then they're also going to ask you if you have a software package that you're using for your accounts. So if you've signed up for anything like QuickBooks or Sage, then you can just drop that down here. And if you don't have it at the moment, then don't worry about it. You can just say no. Next up, then they're just looking for some details about the directors of the company. So these would be what you would have set out when you're setting up the company. So in this instance, it's a husband and wife and they both own 50% and you need to put in their PPS numbers, for example, and whoever is a designated company secretary as well. And if there is any other shareholders aside from the directors of the company, then you need to put in their details in there as well. At the end of this page, then you need to start putting in some details of your tax advisor, if you have any at this point so you can put in their details here at least this way when you're registered they will also get access to your ross online services account so they can do your returns and everything for you so it's just a matter of contacting them getting their tax advisor identification number as well as their client reference then for any different tax returns that they are going to be completing for you you can tick the relevant box whether it's the vat or say employers PAYE and PRSI if they're going to do the payroll for you every month. Lastly in part A they ask you if you're renting out a premises and just for a bit of details about the rented premises and the very last question is about whether the business had been previously owned. In most cases it probably won't have so you can put that down as NA and that is pretty much section A finished off so not too bad. Section B is the easiest section of them all it is just one little question whether you want to register for corporation tax. So all companies are going to have to register for corporation tax. So that's pretty simple. You can just put a little X in that box. Now we're on to part C, which deals with registrations for VAT. So that is one area that you definitely get advice on for your specific company. Depending on the size of your company and the type of customer you have, it may be beneficial or not to register for VAT immediately, but eventually you might have to register for VAT if you hit certain thresholds. Those thresholds are €75,000 in annual turnover if you're selling goods and €37,500 if you're selling services. For this example, I'm just going to assume the company here is going to register for VAT. So I just take the box there and then into section 24 here, it states the date which you want to start your registration for VAT. That's pretty straightforward. Part B here then, that is only 
applies to farmers and non-taxable entities so for the vast majority of you you can just tick tick no there and then they want to know the reason why you are registering for VAT so it can either be that you actually have exceeded those turnover limits that I just mentioned before or else you can actually elect to just be a taxable person for VAT anyway even if you were under the limit so it's your own personal choice and another possible reason why you might have to register for VAT is you are in the receipt of business to business services where the reverse charge to VAT applies. So if you're in that scenario, you will have to register for VAT as well. Next up then, section 25 here asks you, are you applying for the cash receipts basis of accounting for goods and services? So what this basically means is if you have annual turnover less than 2 million, you can apply for this cash receipts basis of accounting for VAT. So what that basically means is you will only pay VAT on your sales when you actually receive the payment for the goods that you're selling. This is opposed to doing it on an invoice basis. So normally you would invoice the customer, you will charge VAT on the invoice, you will do your VAT return, you will pay revenue over that VAT and that may be even before the customer has paid you for that invoice. So it will definitely help your cash flow if you are a smaller company you won't have to actually pay over the VAT to revenue until the customer actually pays you. So it's just up to you whether it's something you want your company to do or not. Section 26 here is just going to ask you for your estimated annual turnover within the state of Ireland. So you can put in whatever your estimate there is. Section 27 then, uh, will your business engage in the sale of goods or services? Describe whatever your business is selling there and where it's selling it from or storing the goods and whoever your courier is if you're selling goods. Next up then we're looking at intra-community activity. So this is so this is purchases and sales that you're making with other EU member states. So the main reason why they're asking this is if you are taking some of these boxes, you're going to have an additional return that you need to do with your business it's called a VIES return and you either do it every month or every quarter and on this return you're going to be listing out all of your customers that you have had sales with in that period their company name and their VAT number because normally when you export any goods or services out of Ireland you can charge a zero rate of VAT on those goods if it's to another EU member state so this is basically going to help the revenue keep track of all of that so in section 29 then you're just going to have to describe who your customers are if they're private individuals if they're businesses or both and what kind of due diligence measures you have in place so you could say i just have some random explanations in here that uh we have to go through some sort of kyc with your customers and a bit of detail on who are going to be providing your delivery services and where the goods are going to be held and what documentation is going to be able to kind of prove that the goods actually left the state so you could say that the customer has signed some sort of goods received note, for example. So as I was saying a moment ago, if you are selling any goods or services to any other customers in any other EU member states, then you are going to have to fill out a VIES return every kind of month or every quarter. So that is what they're dealing with here. And they're going to ask you um, a bit of more information about your annual expected turnover from the supply of goods. Um, and how much you expect to do in a quarter in section 31 here in section 31 here then they're just going to ask you for your bank details because in some instances when your VAT on purchases are higher than your VAT on sales you will actually be due a refund back from revenue so if you're due a refund they're going to need your bank details to actually pay that over to you so you put them in here section section 32 here deals with developers and landlords it's probably not applicable for most people so i'm just going to skip over that part and then lastly the section 33 goes through the postponed accounting for vat so do you intend on importing goods from outside the eu if you are a company who imports say goods from say i don't know america or china then you have to decide whether you want to use the postponed accounting for vat or not so normally when you import goods from outside the EU, it goes through customs and you have to pay the VAT on the imports that you have brought in as soon as they arrive in customs. However, if you go ahead with the postponed accounting for VAT, when you import the goods, you won't pay the VAT on those imports straight away. It will be completely postponed until you do your next VAT return and included with all the rest of your your sales and your purchases again it might help you out as a small business with your cash flows so it is something that you should maybe talk to your accountant about 
whether it is a good idea or not for your business. Part D of the form then relates to registering as an employer for PAY in PRSI. So do you plan on actually hiring people to work for you? If you do, then you're going to have to register for this tax and scope out here how many people that you will have working full time and part time and as well as what payroll software that you're going to use whether it's the likes of Sage Payroll you also have the option there of ticking if you have some sort of manual system but that would probably only work if you have one or two employees you're probably going to need some sort of software if you have a couple of employees um, also you can put in the correspondence of any of your tax advisors or whoever is going to possibly do this payroll for you if you outsource it um, but you can leave that blank if you're going to do it in-house. That section is not very detailed, so you'll have that done in a second. The last part of the forum then deals with relevant contract tax or RCT. Um, this is probably going to be non-applicable for the vast majority of people here, unless you are working in the construction industry or you're some sort of principal or subcontractor. But if you are, then you can just tick the relevant boxes here, which applies to you. And when you actually want to commence, that you're starting to register for RCT and that's pretty much it and lastly then all you have to do is sign the form and you can then send it off to your local revenue office and get yourself registered for tax as a company I know I kind of went through that form pretty fast but if anybody has any questions on anything that I kind of skimmed over or anything please let me know in the comment section and I will try and get some sort of answer to you um, I hope you found the video useful um, if you did please make sure and subscribe to the channel I uh, would really appreciate it and drop a like on the video as well.